Well, here we are. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. I welcome you to worship with Williamsville United Methodist Church today. Let us worship God together.
Please join me in the call to worship. Now is the time of watching and waiting. The time of pregnant expectation of new life. Now is the season of hope unfolding. The dark winter season when hope is waiting to be born. Let us come before God with receptive and willing spirits. May our souls magnify God's name and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. Rejoice. God comes to bring the birthday of life and hope. Amen. Let us join our voices and hearts together in prayer. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel, God with us. You came to us long ago as a helpless babe in need of human love and care. You taught us how to love and care for one another. Help us to hold on to childlike wonder, amazement, and love. Guide our feet into the way of peace, as only the Prince of Peace can lead us. In the name of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, we pray. Amen. We live on the brink every day. We stand in the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of our eternity, God with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl an ordinary girl. And it might have been you or even your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, the Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light this candle with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity the nearness of God, even when we forget to listen, to lean into the presence. God is close, as close as your own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is the peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Darn it!
Let's hear these words from scripture in John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. We have heard three different names for Jesus during this time of Advent. The Gospel writers writing words like Messiah, King, Savior, and Emmanuel. But in John's Gospel account, we hear words like life and light. Jesus as the one who permeates darkness. John's account skips the story about Mary and Joseph. It, goes over the shepherds and it jumps towards God's creation of life and light to what happens when that light enters the world. The world that was in darkness turns to light. Biblically speaking, there's a deep tension between light and darkness within scripture. The Old and the New Testament begin with darkness and light, Genesis and Revelation, and there's two types of darkness that exist. There's moral darkness and situational or emotional darkness. Moral darkness is that which we see that happens in mass. It's acts of terror, hate crimes, mass shootings, selfish acts 
in the world that are meant to harm other people. And situational darkness is that which is associated with grief and sadness and despair, hopelessness. Adam Hamilton writes that Christmas, the incarnation of God, is God's response to both forms of darkness, the moral and the existential. I was recently asked if it's easier to love at Christmas time. I think it is. I think because Jesus' light is permeating the whole world so profoundly, so intimately, so blatantly, that yes, it is easier to love at Christmas because the light of the world is so near to us. The veil of heaven is so thin. Jesus' life and light is more spiritually obvious as we as followers are more in tune to the spirit and more in tune to the light of the world. Each week as Advent has progressed for us, we have been closer and closer to the greater light, the light of the world the Christ child being born again. When we question that, when we still see dark places around us, dark things that are happening, we have to remember, friends, that God intended us to be God's plan to change the world. We are not passive recipients of God's love and grace, but we are active in the responsibility of bringing light to dark places. You and I are gifted and given light. And once again, this Advent season, we therefore in turn are God's vessels to shine and shed light into poverty, into injustice, into loneliness, into hurt, into sickness. We do not hide the light of the world, but we share it. We expand it. We take it with us. It is meant to be spilled and shared for all. Jesus was and is the light of the world, friends. And because of your relationship with Jesus Christ, everyone you encounter should have light shed upon them in this fourth week of Advent. Amen. As we give back in our offering in this time of worship, may we be reminded of all the things that we have been blessed with in 2020. There have been hard times, but as we have approached this final Advent week, we look back as we offer back to God everything that we are and everything that we have. Thank you for your gratitude and for your giving. Let's join our voices together in an offering prayer. Gracious and generous God, we offer our gifts to you, knowing we have devoted more energy into finding gifts for our families than on the gifts we offer for you. 
You gave Mary a son so the world might have a savior. She responded, Here I am, servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. May her affirmation of faith and obedience be the gift we offer this day. In Christ's name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we move forward from this time of worship, we still wait, we still have patience, and we still are watchful for the Christ child in our midst. Go forth in peace this day. Amen.